The far side of the moon, which always faces away from us, has long been shrouded in mystery. From the oddities discovered during Armstrong's moon landing to strange objects photographed by lunar probes, public rumors have only added to its mystique. In fact, scientists are also deeply fascinated by the surface of the moon. But what interests them isn't urban legend, it's the new scientific discoveries the far side has to offer. Last time, we talked about how the so-called lunar seas are actually planes on the moon. These planes aren't spread evenly across the moon. They're almost all clustered on the side that faces us. Because of tidal locking, no one had ever seen the far side of the moon until space probes were sent there. But now, we know that, unlike the near side covered with vast lunar planes, the far side looks completely different. The far side is mostly highlands, densely pocked with craters big and small. So, why is it like this? One common theory is the Earth's shielding effect, that Earth's gravity somewhat reduces the chances of meteor impacts on the near side. That explanation has some merit, but it's not the main reason. Scientists now think the main reason is that the Moon's crust is thicker on the far side than it is on the side facing us. This makes it much harder for magma to reach the far side surface. As a result, with little geological activity, the scars of billions of years worth of impacts have been preserved there. But the reason for this geological difference still isn't fully understood. In May 2025, though, a paper published in Nature used NASA Grail data to show that the Moon's mantle isn't the same temperature everywhere. The mantle beneath the near side is over 100 degrees hotter than the far side. A hotter mantle produces magma more easily, and this magma carries hydrogen, the building blocks for the crust, up to the surface. Also, because the magma is more fluid, it stretches the crust, preventing the near side from building up a thick shell. On the far side, with a cooler mantle and less fluid magma, crust material builds up more easily, gradually making the crust thicker there than on the near side. It's not just about temperature, the water content in the mantle also differs between the two sides. At this point, you might ask, even if the mantle is cooler, it's still hundreds or thousands of degrees, how could there be water? But here, water doesn't mean regular water molecules. It refers to hydroxyl groups, a kind of water locked inside the mineral crystal structure, also called structural water. In April 2025, another study in Nature used samples brought back by Chang'e 6 to measure how much structural water is in the far side's mantle. The results showed that the far side's mantle contains much less water than the near side's. One current hypothesis links this to the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side. This basin was created 4.3 billion years ago by a massive celestial impact. The impact was so powerful that it blasted water from the mantle beneath the basin and pushed it toward the near side. That's why the far side is drier than the near side. Of course, that's just one theory. Another explanation points to the mantle's own layered structure. The basalts on the far side come from deeper, older mantle layers, formed at a time when there was less water. Most of the near side's basalts come from shallower mantle, so it makes sense for them to have more water. You might know that as the moon's interior cooled, its magnetic field faded. Now, it's almost completely gone. But what you might not know is that the moon's magnetic field once made a surprising comeback. Earlier, when scientists examined lunar samples brought back by the Apollo missions, they discovered that the Moon once had a relatively active magnetic field between 4.2 and 3.5 billion years ago. But around 3.1 billion years ago, the Moon's magnetic field suddenly plummeted to just one-tenth of its previous strength. Scientists believe that after that, the Moon's magnetic field remained in this weakened state. But in December 2024, another Nature paper reported that a team from the Chinese Academy of Sciences analyzed samples from the far side's Apollo impact crater and discovered that the ancient magnetic field was stronger than previously thought. Their data suggests that 2.8 billion years ago, the Moon's magnetic field actually rebounded, with its internal dynamo somehow restarting. This finding overturns the traditional idea that the Moon's magnetic field just faded away. It shows that the mechanism generating the Moon's magnetic field might be far more complex than we thought. Even though the Moon doesn't have a global magnetic field anymore, that doesn't mean it's completely without magnetism. For example, the outermost lunar crust still contains what scientists call magnetic field fossils. So, what exactly is a magnetic field fossil? In the Moon's early days, when its magnetic field still existed and the interior was fully molten, as surface magma cooled and crystallized, minerals like iron and nickel would align themselves, like tiny compasses, with the existing magnetic field. After the magma had completely cooled into solid rock, the alignment of these magnetic minerals became permanently fixed. Even after the global magnetic field vanished, this alignment stayed put, essentially preserving a fossil of the ancient magnetic field. 
The remnants of magnetic fields in these magnetic fossils are extremely weak and are unevenly scattered across the lunar surface. At the center of the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon, the magnetic field is so faint that it's nearly undetectable. Yet at its northern edge, there's a band of strong magnetic field. Why does this happen? Mainly because the impact that created the basin was extremely violent. The intense heat from the impact essentially wiped out the magnetic field at the center. Although later volcanic activity added some magnetic material, it didn't make much difference. Meanwhile, the basin's edge escaped the extreme heat and instead collected lots of magnetic particles from the impact, resulting in a stronger magnetic field. But things look very different on the moon's near side. On the near side, magnetic fields aren't concentrated in one spot. Instead, they're scattered across the boundaries between lunar seas and highlands. Although these areas also contain fossil magnetic fields, they're much stronger than those found in the basin on the far side. That's because the near side hasn't gone through a massive impact like the South Pole Aiken Basin. Besides the different magnetic fossil patterns, the magnetism of lunar soil on the near and far sides also varies greatly. Whether it is the lunar soil brought back by Apollo missions or samples collected by Chang'e 5, the near side's soil shows extremely weak magnetism. But when researchers got their hands on lunar soil from the far side brought back by Chang'e 6, they found it was noticeably different from the near side samples. In July 2025, a paper published in Nature revealed that after analyzing the lunar soil from Chang'e 6, researchers found the far side's soil had much stronger magnetism than samples from the near side. The analysis showed that the far side's lunar soil contains about 0.75% iron, while the near side's soil only has about 0.3% to 0.5%. What's even more interesting is that the iron particles in the far side's lunar soil aren't just scattered, they're highly concentrated, sometimes forming nano or micron-sized clusters. So why are there so many magnetic particles on the far side? Currently, scientists believe there are two main reasons. First, the South Pole Aiken Basin underwent volcanic activity about 2.8 billion years ago. The basalt produced from cooling magma contains a significant amount of nickel-poor iron particles. These iron particles formed directly as the magma crystallized, giving them regular shapes and allowing them to reliably record the moon's magnetic field from that era. On the near side, the lunar soil is much older, so it contains fewer original magnetic particles. Second, in addition to the native magnetic particles, meteorite impacts bring plenty of external magnetic particles. As mentioned earlier, the far side of the moon is theoretically more likely to be hit by meteorites than the near side. For instance, the South Pole Aitken Basin is the moon's largest impact crater. Since its formation 4.3 billion years ago, it's been hit by a series of meteorites, including those during the late heavy bombardment period. With every impact, iron and nickel from the meteorites mix with lunar rocks and quickly cool to form iron-nickel alloy particles. Because of their higher nickel content, these particles are magnetically more stable than pure iron ones. It's these varied and unique magnetic minerals that make the lunar soil on the far side more magnetic than the soil on the near side. All this shows that with the ongoing Chang'e missions, especially the samples brought back from the far side by Chang'e 6, scientists have made many breakthroughs in lunar research. Our understanding of the moon has grown much deeper. In the future, as we plan to return to the moon and even build lunar bases, our exploration will surely go even further.